And I'm back. Hey, someone trusted Christ this past week at our church. Isn't that great? Yeah, good stuff. A young lady in our young adults group uh, made the decision, was so excited, wanted to get baptized right then. We had to hold her off. All right. So excited about that. We got so much to cover. Are you ready to listen? I'm ready to talk. Everybody open your Bibles. We're going to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. We're starting a new series. It's called Clarity, Getting Church Right. We're going to look at a church, an early church, the church of Corinth, and learn from them how we as a church are meant to to function and uh, live here in this world that we are a part of. uh, A lot of times when you learn things, you can learn from people who do things well and try to emulate them. Sometimes you can learn from people who don't do things well. They make mistakes so that you don't have to. And uh, we get to kind of look at the mistakes. Uh, Corinth is a church (laughs) that made many mistakes. And uh, we're going to learn from a lot of their mistakes about how we as a church in 2010 need to be functioning I want to kind of do uh, two parts to my sermon today. I'm going to teach a little bit at the front, and then I'm going to preach a little bit at the back. But what I want to do is, uh, as we start into this book, is kind of get you familiar with what's going on in Corinth. So if you uh, can kind of hold your finger there in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, uh, we're going to uh, just skip over a, a couple books to Acts, back a couple books to the book of Acts in chapter 18, and I'm going to tell you the story uh, of how the church at Corinth got going. I'm going to do that right after I pray one more time. You ready? Hey, Father, thank you so much for this chance to dive into your book. Uh, The words there that you've inspired, God, uh, are there so that we can be different. We can change. Uh, We can know what you want and live in it. And so, Lord, that's my prayer this morning, that everybody in this room uh, would would discern from you by your spirit the things that you want from them as we open your book, and that, God, we would be uh, given your courage, your strength to change what needs to change. God, make us a mighty church. You've done so much through us in our history. We are so grateful for all the ways that you've uh, used us to, to make your name famous in our community, to bring you the glory you deserve. But we, we pray, God, that our best days are ahead of us. Uh, continue to show us who you want us to be as a church. And uh, I thank you for this opportunity to gather in your word. Teach us now. Push me aside. Speak in my place. Jesus, I pray this in your name. And everybody said. Acts chapter 18, uh, Paul arrives in Corinth. It's around 50 A.D., and he uh, heads into town after a, uh, an amazing time in uh, the Greek city of Athens, and uh, he, he kind of comes into Corinth and uh, decides that he, this is the next place God wants him to plant a church. Paul planted several churches. In fact, if you look in the back of your Bibles, the New Testament is almost half of uh, its content is Paul's writings to these churches in Corinth, and Rome, and in Thessalonica, and Philippi, and Colossae. He writes, uh, goes and starts all these churches on one of his three different uh, missionary journeys, but the, uh, as he leaves those churches and leaves those churches in the hands of other pastors, he ends up writing back to those churches and forming for them uh, what was their doctrine and is now our doctrine, our system of belief. Uh, Paul is uh, in Corinth. Uh, he gets there, he doesn't know uh, person one. He just kind of arrives in the, in the town and he needs to you know, start uh, making a living for himself. So he employs his skills as a laborer. He's a tent maker, a leather worker. And uh, he made probably tents for the Roman uh, army at the time uh, so that they could go off and fight their wars. And uh, while he's there early on in the process in Acts chapter 18, I'm not going to read the verses out loud. Look in your Bibles. It's in there. Trust me. Uh, in Acts chapter 18, he meets this, uh, this couple, Priscilla and Aquila. They've come from Rome. They were kicked out of there by the emperor because the Christians were getting persecuted. And so God appoints uh, those two and Paul to come together and be a support for each other in the early days of the planting work of the church in Corinth. A little bit later in the story, we see that uh, Timothy, a guy that gets a couple letters in the Bible, and uh, one of Paul's buddies, Silas, arrive in Corinth. And it's at this time that Paul is now able to kind of get really cranking on planting this church. He goes first to the Jews. Did you know that when Jesus came to our earth, he went first to the Jews? That's God's appointment. Uh, He wants us to, or he wanted Jesus to go first to hit the children of God. And then when the children of God rejected Jesus, what did he do? He kind of spread the message out a little bit, right? And that's why you and I can sit here today. We are not, most of us, uh, of Jewish descent. Uh, We are Gentiles. And we're all glad that Jesus left the Jews and came to us. Anybody with me? All right, good. So, as, as uh, Jesus did that in the Gospels, Paul has kind of adopted that method. He first goes to the synagogues. He tries to win over people there. And when uh, they end up rejecting him, which w- uh, almost always they do, he uh, dusts off his feet, as it says here in Acts chapter 18. And he says, you guys, I'm done with you. I'm going next door. 
Uh, as he's leaving the Jewish synagogue and heading off to talk to the Gentiles there in Corinth, uh, he takes with him an interesting guy. His name is Crispus, and uh, Crispus was the synagogue ruler. He'd be like one of the lead pastors uh, at the church there for the Jews, and uh, he was persuaded by Paul to follow Christ and uh, ends up leaving the Jewish synagogue to go with Paul as he plants the church. Paul has this dream, uh, and as, uh, as, as most of us would want to be in this strange place uh, with few friends, he was probably a little uh, trepidatious about the whole experience. He probably wondered if this was going to really work, but Jesus comes to him in a dream. If it's in your Bibles and you have those red letters, you can see that Jesus speaks to him in a dream with those red letters, and he says, hey, Paul, there's plenty of people here. Plenty of people here knew Jesus, who need Jesus. You just stick around. This is going to work out. And that was one of the first signs from God uh, that made this church in Corinth possible. Perhaps Paul was wondering if he needed to pull up you know, his tent stakes, as it were, and go somewhere else. Jesus said, nope, stick around. Uh, usually, right, right after Jesus gives us an affirmation, or God gives us an affirmation, uh, something calamitous happens that we needed the affirmation for. <laughs> and that's what happens here in chapter eight, 18 of Acts. Uh, Paul, uh, we don't know how much time elapsed, but the Jews trumped up some charges against Paul, and they hauled him into court. And this is a big deal. This isn't kind of like, you know, Judge Wapner, people's court, we're just going to get a slap on the wrist. If Paul loses this case, he could be put to death. Uh, the charges against him were that he was, he was uh, essentially creating a religion that was not sanctioned by the Roman government. This whole Christian faith uh, was, was, you know, something that had not been stamped uh, by Caesar, and therefore he was treasonous. He was coming against the Roman Empire. Pe Romans didn't take well to people who came against them. Did you know that? They were not kind. So here come these Jews, the, the same Jews that he had left the synagogue and said goodbye to. Uh, they haul him into court. They take him before the governor of the region, a guy named Gallio. And uh, they say, Gallio, Paul's making trouble. You need to kill him. Gallio, though, pulls a Pontius Pilate. He's like, I can't find any fault in this guy. Why do you Jews keep bothering me? Get him and yourselves out of here. And that's what happens. Now, apparently there, in Acts chapter 18, the people of Corinth uh, were, were just kind of set against the Jews anyway. There's been anti-Semitism throughout uh, time, just so you know. And so uh, Corinth and, and the people in Corinth uh, saw that this was just another way that the Jews were trying to create unrest. And so as a, kind of a, a, a reminder to the Jews not to make uh, ruffles, they take the leader of the synagogue at the time, a guy named Sosthenes. Everybody say Sosthenes. Sosthenes replaced Crispus, the guy who was now with Paul. And uh, he was probably the lawyer that was arguing the case for the Jews. He lost. He comes out. And outside the courtroom steps is this angry mob. And they put the beat down on Sosthenes. I mean, they just, you know, kicked the living hoo-ha out of him. And uh, you need to remember Sosthenes because he's going to come up in just a second. Uh, so that's how the Church of Corinth got going. Uh, in, in fact, if you want to read the stories of all the churches that Paul writes letters to in the back of the New Testament, you can just go to the book of Acts. All of those uh, Genesises, Genesis, Gen beginnings, that's what I'm saying. All the beginnings of those churches are found there in the book of Acts. Everybody familiar now with what uh, Cor uh, Corinth's origins are? How Paul got it all started? All right, let's talk about Corinth. You ready? Uh, everybody picture uh, the Mediterranean Sea. Here it is. How's it going? We got the nation of Israel over here. You come around. Uh, you're going through you know, all these other countries. And then you get past uh, you know, those countries. You get to Greece. Everybody picturing Greece? Greece is kind of like Florida. It's a peninsula. It juts out into the Mediterranean Sea. And Corinth was situated just about halfway north and south in, in, in the middle of Greece. And it's this really, Greece is this interesting piece of land. Where Corinth was, Greece narrows to about a four mile tract of land. It's on the port. And uh, it, it, as a port city, it was a center of commerce, it was a center of culture, it was a center of the, of the entire uh, you know, Mediterranean region. All these countries would come through Corinth to get their goods to Rome, which was the, you know, the, the capital of the world at the time. They'd come to Corinth, you know what an isthmus is? It's, it's this little piece of land. And they'd come to Corinth at the port, they would put their ships in there, and then slaves would be made to pick the ship up, I don't know how they did this, they had some wheels or something, they would actually put the ship on what we would like, equate with a tractor trailer truck or something, and they'd roll this ship across Greece 
across you know, this isthmus, this four-mile tract of land, and put it back in the water on the other side. They would do this so that they wouldn't have to go all the way around Crete and into the dangerous waters of the Mediterranean Sea. It was safer by the shore. And so, they, that's, and so Corinth, what I'm trying to tell you, was a busy place, happening place. 